I can't wait to show you my toys. Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today we're going to look at one of my Batman villain action figure collections. This here is my Court of Owls. You can see we've got nine members of the court in the background in suited bodies with their masks on. And then we've got a total of 12 talons. So let's take a look at this set. So first of all, we've got these three talons. These are ninja talons from the animated film Batman vs. Robin. Then next we've got these three talons. These are from the DC comic continuity. I believe they're from Greg Capullo's art. And then as you can see, a couple more members of the court. And of course above them, several more members of the court. And a couple more over here. Followed by another six talons. And then as you can see in the back here, we've got a bunch of the members of the Court of Owls. These are just sort of suited action figures I had laying around. Sort of extra civilian type figures. As you can see, they all have masks attached to their face. I use a little adhesive thing. We'll take a little look at that later. The masks here, all the ones on the male figures, came from the DC Direct Talon figure. And the ones on the females came with the Mattel Multiverse Damian Wayne Robin figure. The fact that I got six talons, I had 60 extra masks, and it just seemed like a match made in heaven to make a court. And then later, when they released that Damian Wayne Robin, I ended up getting three of him. One of them I flipped, and two of them I swapped out some parts and made my ideal Damian Wayne Robins. Now, as far as the figures in the set goes, I'm the type of collector that gets one of every Batman figure to keep in my unopened collection. And with the talents here, I decided to get six of them out of the package as they're great army builders. First of all, I can get these guys are pretty cheap nowadays at Amazon. Second of all, the articulation and detail is superb. Only thing lacking is no neck articulation. But with their weird head design, I can understand why. This is not a super new figure by any means. DC Comics Designer Series, Greg Capullo, action figure. I believe this is a second figure in this line. You see Talon. Here he is. He comes with some knives, a couple swords behind him. All these knives on his chest are removable as well. And then, of course, he has this Court of Owls mask. One of the coolest things this guy's came with. And since I got six of these guys, had six of those masks, it just made my Court of Owls even bigger. Some other figures that were around at the same time, this is the Capullo Batman, who's great. Riddler and Nightwing, they're pretty nice figures. Not exactly my ideal versions of either of those characters. You can see the talent here. So I ended up purchasing seven of these guys. One to keep on open, and six for some army building. And then a little while later, they released this figure. This is Ninja Talon. It's from the DC Universe animated film, Batman vs. Robin. So you can see, different kind of packaging. This one has the card back with the blister front. Figure in there, absolutely no accessories. And this would be how the talent appeared in the animated film. DC Universe animated movie. See the background, Batman vs. Robin. Ninja Talon. Talon post up on the side. This would be, I believe, the 15th figure in the DC animated film line. A couple other figures that were re released around the same time. This was the only figure specifically released from this film, although Batman and Robin and Nightwing would work just fine. And then, of course, that led to me getting seven of these guys as well. One to keep on open, and six for army builders. Unfortunate, these guys didn't come with a convenient mask like the others did. And then the other officially licensed figure that's included in the set here would be the Damian Wayne Robin from the DC Comics Multiverse line. Now this was a Toys R Us exclusive and it came with a variant head for King Shark. This is the Hammerhead version. But as you can see, one of the coolest things, we got another Court of Owls mask. I bought a couple of these Damien's. I took the old signature Robin that had no hood on, swapped them out, so I had this guy here with his hood off, that guy there with the hood on, kind of gave me an excuse why I could use more than one of these Robins and accumulate a couple of these masks. 
This figure is not even really part of the necessary group to build this guy, but it does have this extra head, which is a cool feature. In the comics, he was involved with the Court of Owls quite a bit during this period of time. So at this point, I had an army of 12 Talons, and I had 9 of these masks, and it's about time to assemble my court. So I took some women in sort of dresses or regular clothing, and a guys in a whole bunch of suits. Some of them kind of looking a little more old-fashioned or older school. And I thought these worked out okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, the male masks are a little bit too large and look a little bit absurd. But I'm really, really happy to have a full Court of Owls and Talon army for my Batman world. And then here would be all the figures with their masks off. Like I said before, just sort of regular looking people that I thought might be appropriate for a Court of Owls setup. And the first figure here, some wrestling woman, barely any articulation, but had sort of a dress up, fancy dress going on. Next guy here, hate to say it, I can't even remember what line it's from. I want to say it's maybe from a book. I always thought this guy made a good Russian from The Dark Knight. Then next we've got Darla from the TV show Angel. She has her vampire face on right now, so effectively she ended up being useless in my civilian action figure collection. I believe I got her in a large lot of Buffy and Angel figures. Cover her face up with a Court of Owls mask and you have no idea. Next I believe is Ichabod Crane from Sleepy Hollow. This guy here, kind of older school suit. Put a mask on, works out good. Next we got Mary Jane from I believe the first Spider-Man film. Probably the shortest one of these figures, but some women are shorter than other people. Next, got a figure from Kill Bill. I think I got this guy on eBay for like $6. This works out pretty good. We got Giles from Buffy, another suited guy, pinstripe suit. I believe I got a second one to replace my, in my civilian world because I liked him so much. Then we've got a penguin from Gotham. I ended up, I think, having three of these figures, so... Go ahead and pop up a mask on him and you really can't tell. Then we've got Dracula from Marvel Legends. I got him to use as a suited guy, but you know what? His hands and his face really don't make that possible. Bam, slap mask on him and he looks pretty good. So I took each one of these masks and I put what I believe are called, I don't know, glue dots or sticky tacks on the inside of the mask, bottom and the top. Every once in a while they might need to replace as they get old and a little less sticky. But I've pretty much got endless supply of these things. They're kind of between these two pieces of, I don't know, kind of wax paper. Use them as needed. I like using these things. They can really help action figures sometimes. Maybe help them hold a weapon, attach them to their face, etc, etc. Hang some on the wall. They really don't leave a lot of sticky residue, which is pretty nice. Alright, now that we've got their mask back on, let's stick them back in their diorama. And then as far as these dioramas go, these don't actually normally stay with my Court of Owls. These are a couple of dioramas that I pulled out of my Wayne Manor setup. Of course we got the library and the staircase. Great for a huge, elaborate mansion. My court usually just stays on a shelf that's blank, waiting for a rainy day to be taken out. I don't actually have any sort of large two-tier court with a balcony on top where you can cast judgment on somebody. It'd be really cool if I did, but I thought this would be a kind of nice having two different levels, kind of the court on top, sort of casting judgment on somebody. And then speaking of them casting judgment, here they are, judge, jury, and executioner in their court of owls, condemning the district attorney, the police commissioner, and the mayor to a slow death. And then here's an invasion in the Batcave by the army of Talon sent by the court. So you can see Batman in his Thrasher suit, Alfred trying to defend the cave. Then down below we've got Nightwing and Robin trying to protect the cave assets as well. And then here's the Court of Owls on their shelf. Like I said before, just waiting for a rainy day for someone to take them out and play with them or set them up on display. So, this is one of my many different Batman villain collections. If this video does well, I'll probably try to go ahead and do some more. Maybe we'll do Mad Hatter next. 
showing off all kind of different henchmen and accessories and whatnot. The fact that Talon came with this mask was really just sort of a sign from God that I had to make my Court of Owls, and I'm really happy to have this. This is definitely an integral part of the current Batman continuity, and I'm happy to be able to check this off my list. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it in the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure collection videos for me, please press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll talk to you guys real soon.